Here are my don'ts of Italy. If you have any of your own, leave them down below in the comments. Number one, don't wear shorts or short skirts or tank tops when you are visiting churches and basilicas, particularly if you are going to the Vatican. I have seen so many tourists get turned away. I've also seen, to be honest, them being allowed in. It's a little bit hit and miss what they allow you to do. But as a general rule, you want to be respectful when you go into these places. Cover your knees and cover your shoulders is a good rule of thumb. Number two, don't eat at the tourist hotspots. I mean, you can if you wanna pay through the nose for your food and to not really get an authentic Italian experience. But if you are in Rome and you are by the Colosseum or in Venice in St. Mark's Square, the restaurants around those places are touristy restaurants. The locals don't go there. It's very overpriced food. It's a very touristy menu. And like I say, you won't get a true, real, authentic Italian experience. For a much better eating experience, just go a few streets over. The food will be cheaper and generally it's nicer food. Did you know that whenever you connect to a public Wi-Fi network, your devices are at risk of being hacked? That could be an airport, a coffee shop, a restaurant, but if you have a VPN like Surfshark, it will turn your public Wi-Fi connection into a private one, which means that none of those hackers can get into your devices via that connection, which is just essential. Surfshark can also change the virtual location of your device to pretty much anywhere in the world. So that means if you ever get that message that says, sorry, this service is not available in your country, with a click of a button, you can change the location for somewhere where you can get that service. It's great for getting Netflix from different countries. Surfshark is one of the only VPNs that allows you to connect unlimited devices under one account and they are giving you a massive 81% off if you use the link in the description. Go check it out. Sticking with food is Italy after all. The third don't is don't necessarily expect to be able to get food between around three and seven. In more touristy areas now, they generally you can get food to be honest, between these times. But in less touristy areas, places open for lunch between about 12 and three, and then they close, and then they open again for dinner around seven till 12 early hours of the morning, to be honest. Dinner is a very long, drawn out affair in Italy, which I love. Like I say, tourist areas, you know, if you're in the center of Rome, the center of Venice, you're gonna be able to get food at any time, in all honesty, but if you are in a more kind of local area, the Italians generally kind of stick to those times. You will be able to get food between three and seven. Number four, when you are eating in a restaurant, you don't necessarily have to tip. Don't get me wrong, the waiters, waitresses, they will love it if you do tip them. And to be honest, I kind of always do tip. I generally always receive really good service and I like to give a tip for that but you don't have to. This is probably more kind of for the Americans. It's very standard to tip in America if you eat out. It's not necessarily standard in Italy and don't feel that you have to. There is a carpeta charge, which you will notice on your bill. If you do sit down, don't be mistaken thinking that is a tip for the waiter. It isn't, it is the restaurant's way of charging you for the fact that you've sat down. It is just you sitting, using a space in their restaurant, kind of like a cover charge and you will pay it per person. In my experience, it's usually around 150 to euros, but that does go to the restaurant, not to the waiter. So if you wanna give the waiter something, you can tip them, but you don't need to. Number five, do not expect punctuality. The Italians, very similar to the Spanish, have the kind of the manana manana attitude to things. Nothing goes particularly quickly. They don't really care about time. You know, if something says it's gonna be five minutes, it could be t five minutes, it could be 10, it could be 15. It's just this kind of relaxed atmosphere that doesn't really run on the schedule of time. So you need to just relax a little bit with the whole timing thing whilst you're over in Italy. Number six, don't expect that people are necessarily gonna be able to speak English. It's one of my big pet peeves when people go abroad and they just speak louder and think that people will be able to understand them. It won't work, it doesn't, I don't know, I just don't understand it. But yeah, especially in Italy, only about a third of Italians speak English to a kind of basic level. And let's be honest, you're in their country. Take a moment to try and learn a few of their phrases that will just help get you by. They will really appreciate it. You already know, ciao. We all know ciao. You can use ciao. Good morning, buongiorno. Please, per favore. 
thank you, grazie, how are you, come stai. Just learn a few little words to be able to communicate a little bit with the Italians that you meet over there. Number seven, whilst the major tourist places like Rome, Venice, Florence are of course amazing, beautiful places with so much going on, if you can, if you have the time, don't make the mistake of just staying in those places. If you can visit some of the smaller towns and villages on the outskirts, they are truly amazing and there are some fantastic, amazing, amazing little Italian villages that you can go and visit. I've stayed with an Italian family just a little bit outside of Turin near the Alps and oh my goodness, it was such a beautiful, beautiful place. If you can get out to these places, please, I do encourage you to do so. Number eight, do not share a pizza, which is good news as far as I'm concerned. I think possibly this is more an American thing that you, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, that you would get like a big pizza and you could take a couple of slices each. In Italy, it's fantastic. You can just have your own all to yourself. I mean, they're obviously not as big. They're kind of about a nine inch size pizza and they do them in the wood fire. It's like, oh, one of my most favorite is food in the whole world, a wood-fired authentic Italian pizza is just oh, delicious. But yeah, you get one all to yourself, it's wonderful. Number nine, it's another food one. There's a lot of food stuff related to Italy, but don't expect to find things like spaghetti meatballs, Caesar salad, uh, fettuccine alfredo on the menu in Italy. You may find it in kind of the real tourist places. It's a very, American uh, English kind of ad adaptation of the Italian food, things like spaghetti meatballs. They just don't eat that way in Italy. The Alfredo sauce, for example, is not a creamy sauce at all. It's a very Americanized version of the original, which was created by a guy named Alfredo, funnily enough, in Rome. And it was just a kind of a butter parmesan sauce. It doesn't have cream whatsoever you're not going to find that in an authentic italian restaurant and so don't be surprised if those things just aren't on the menu use it as an opportunity to try some real classic authentic italian food not english americanized versions of them the interesting thing about food and italy is italy actually only became a country i think it was around 1860 around that time and so it was very regionalized and the food still has that about it now if you go to the north of italy near the alps and near france and switzerland you're going to get more robust kind of dishes more southern you're going to get the more tomato -y dishes i think florence has the kind of more buttery dishes it's wherever you go it's a kind of a completely different style of food and it's fantastic so delve into those localized dishes they're just wonderful number 10 don't forget to validate your ticket if you're traveling on public transport so you will buy your ticket for metro and buses and things in advance for the metro you kind of have to put it through a machine before you can kind of go through the turnstiles so you should be all right that validates it but if you're on a bus and you have your ticket there will be a machine on the bus where you just pop your ticket in that validates it and you're good to go if you don't do that you could get fined about 50 euros even if you have a ticket if it's not validated you can get fined it's not worth it validate your ticket a little bonus one number 11 because i've just thought about it if you are sitting at a restaurant don't forget to actually ask for your bill. They probably won't just bring it to you. Dining in Italy is just, like I said before, a very relaxed, kind of long drawn out affair. So, you know, you will eat at your table and once you're finished, you need to get the waiter's attention and you need to ask for the bill. If you wanna know how to say it in Italian, ask for the il conto and they will bring you the bill. You could be sitting there for a long time, just waiting. You've got to ask. <laughs> So they are my 11 don'ts of Italy. If you have any more, I'm sure there's a ton. Please do leave them down below in the comments. Thank you so much for watching this video. Subscribe if you haven't done already and I will see you soon. Bye bye.